into the nose, out to the mouth. Regulate your breathing from the start of the workout. Don't hold your breath. Don't sacrifice good technique for speed or power. Backwards. Don't work an injury, cause an injury, be an injury. Now let's make sure we do enough that we leave better than we came in today. Opposite directions. Switch. Crossing. Hands right up underneath the chin and small turns on this one. This is just a little baby turns. Not even with your hips. Now you can take your step out and do the hips. Knees in and out. Nice and relaxed. Get them moving. Circles. Reverse. Up and down. Toes. Check it out. Knees up. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, to the sides, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Behind us, stiff leg and make sure nothing's behind you, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we'll go to the other side. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Okay, just shake it out a little bit. So we'll just go through some basics here since we're here. <laughs> you can quote me on that. Um, stances, we'll go do horse stance, we'll go through all of our blocks. Then we'll move into the bow stance and do a bunch of our kicks. And then we'll put the sub together for our breakaways and fallouts. Then we'll stretch. So pace yourself accordingly. Okay, sweep it out to a horse. Hey! Okay, start with a really good stance, solid, everything correct. So the horse stance, knees out, back straight, inside hooking block, cross your arms, twist at the end, make sure you have a hook. And as we start to go through it, you can work yourself down as low as you can. Remember, if you start to lean forward though, it's better to be a little bit higher than a lot incorrect. So here we go, inside hooking blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we'll do two blocks to the count, but don't do two blocks like this. Those aren't two blocks. One, two, it just saves me from having to count so much. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now three. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now as fast as you can go, don't worry too much about your technique, just keep it clean, ten to the count. One. Now, sink yourself down in a really good solid stance. Make sure that it's all correct. Push your hands out, straighten your back out, and push your knees out. And focus on pushing your knees as far as you can that way and keeping your back straight up and down. And when we stand up, I don't want you to lean forward. Stand straight up. And shake it out a little bit. Good job. We get to minor habits, micro habits. I'm in this I'm all day long, so when I stand up, I, I, I start. That becomes a, a habit, not a good habit. Okay, so let's sweep it out to a horse stance again. Hey! And this time, we flip to reverse hooking blocks. Okay, so cross the arms, twist at the end. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two to the count. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten to the count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. straighten up. Sink, push the knees up, reach down here and push your knees up. Notice that you can you got at least an inch that you were holding back on. Then straighten your back up, push your hands up. Sink, hold until we come up and when we come up no hinging at the hips.
In through the nose, out through the mouth. Straight up. Awesome. Shake it out. Move around. <clears throat> Almost there. Legs are starting to get warmed up. Okay, we'll go to the rising block. So sweep to a horse. Heat. Okay, so with the rising block, cross your arms and think about your center line and your bone that comes up right here. You actually want to impact on the inside of that arm and then twist out. Don't twist upward. With the kind of shoulder wants you to do that, you'll usually end up with a rolling punch. Go into it. It should, it should feel like a thrust punch feels, but what they aren't. So we'll start with the left hand out. Shoulders are square. Same thing. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two to the count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Drop down. Three to the count. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten to the count. One, two, three. Just do one little correction. It always happens on the rising block. Okay, sweep it out to a horse stance. Don't get too low, we're correcting something. Take your left hand, put it on your hip. Take your right hand, put it behind your back. And what I want you to do is take your left hand and imagine a board comes straight up your center line to about nose high. I want you to raise that hand straight up here until the board, your wrist is over the board. Then I want you to rotate and keep that hand over the board. So here's the board. Okay? When you come back, it kind of comes back the same way. So you guys are kind of coming up this way, and when we go fast, you know, you got the end result, but we're, we're missing this. It comes up and out up and out. Hey, easiest way to do this is to have somebody have a board there. But you can use your imagination. So one at a time, no cross. Up the board, nose, wrist, meet the punch. Up the board, and sometimes eyebrows are fine too right here. I just go nose, meet it. Okay, one, don't worry about the cross for now. Two, we'll put that in a second. Three, four, Five, six, there you go, now you guys got it. Seven, uppercut twist. Eight, nine, ten. Hey, right, now since our hand is up, when we pull down this way, we're gonna cross a little bit. So we got an outside block there. This hand is gonna come up the, the um, stick, but on the outside of the, okay? So, so, so the hand does, the blocking hand does the same. This just clears in a little bit. So what happens on fast ones, this, and also when you're taught this sometimes because the beginners, we teach them to kind of cross their arms because crossing is so hard, and then that's where this comes in, okay? Me, I would correct that before it happened, but it could happen to you, okay? So this one comes up, this one crosses, face, then you twist. Okay, so here we go. One, two, so there's two blocks in here, three, Four, there's a the block there, there's the block there. Five, down, 
out. Six, seven, eight, there you go. Nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lower. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lower. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Straight up, hands to the hip. Okay, so when you guys got your blocks down um, and we're doing something, the exercise is probably the stance, not the block. So if you got this rising block down and you're doing it correct, then you should work on something else because if you're up here doing perfect rising blocks, we got an issue there. Okay, so shake it out. Think about the three blocks. Inside block, reverse hooking block, rising block. Okay, they all cross. Okay, here we go. Left front bow, one. Okay, so we're gonna do front kicks. Most important thing with the front kick is retraction. I think you guys all know that. So we're going to lift our foot up and we're gonna slowly push away like we're pushing a weight. The only difference about pushing a weight away is that the weight stays constant. We, I don't want you to do that. I want you to start the tension mild until at the end you're flexing and then pull back. So I wouldn't know the pounds, but here's the analogy sort of one pound of pressure, two pounds of pressure. In order to do that, I have to, it's like if you have a band, you'll feel this really. You push it all the way out, then the commitment is right there, and then you pull it back. Step back, so stay level. Do not worry at all the height of the kick. It's the thrust and the push we're training here. Your hands, if they're here, it should shift over here, but since I'm gonna be tightening up the stomach and I wanna keep good balance, I'm keeping myself in this position for these kicks. Okay, front kick, one. Toes up, knee higher than the hip, push away from you. Here comes the tension. There it all is. Cat stance, shift your hip back because you went from a thrusting position. Make sure you go back to here before you go. Micro habits. Back, two. Butt back, back, three. A hold. So when you thrust, this is what happens. And you come back, sometimes you don't even realize that you're still there. Make sure that this comes first so that I can move any position so I'm in a proper cat stance. Okay, that's all you have to do. Okay, three. Fist tight, shoulders squared, push, get it back. Back, four. Push that weight away from you. Push, push, don't leave the leg out there once it locks out though, it's over. Back. Five. Five. Six. Tension on it's really easy to cheat on this one because nobody's feeling that leg. Push! Back! Nine! Back! Last one, best one. Ten! Back! Switch! Hey, same thing. One! Right on. Knee higher than the hip. Now the push. Then the retraction, then the Position, then the back. Two. Back. Three. Back. Four. Back. Five. Back. And 
shake it out. And we're froze. Is it me? You? Are you guys all stuck in a position? Yeah, drugs freeze up for everybody else? Yeah. Hold up. They'll all speed up here. Minor technical issues. That's okay. We all did. It was pretty neat to see. Okay. Awesome. It always fixes itself. Okay. Back to the left bow again, please. Hey. Okay, so we're going to do um, just five of the front kick, but I really want you to work on really kind of two things. Staying level so that you're not going up and down. So kick any height you want, but stay level. And a lot of tension at the very end, but I need you to think and feel your front kick like um, you would a rubber band. If I take a rubber band and I pull it with my right hand and then I let it, and it's fully say flexed, and I let it go, it snaps back. That's your leg. You push it out there, it's the rubber band being pulled, you tighten it up as much as you can, then you let go of it, and it snaps back. But it has to happen at the end, you can't leave your foot out there. Okay, five each leg. One. Back. Two. Grab the opposite leg, stretch out the front of the leg, right down here if you can find that. Other leg, same thing. Okay, so on the roundhouse kick, the uh, focus concentration doesn't come on the extension and tip, because we've already trained those muscles. So a front kick, a roundhouse kick, is kind of a front kick on the horizontal, right? So you don't need to train what we just did. Um, so what we want to do on the roundhouse kick is train the alignment, which is shoulder, hip, and knee, and the heel higher than the knee and then slowly extend out for movement. When we apply this, we shorten that up and break a few of those rules. But when we train it, we train everything. So go back to a left bow stance. So you're gonna lift your heel up first. We're gonna just take our time on this, and we're gonna come around, okay? So the heel lifts, the knee drops, not this way, that way. So as I turn, okay, I'm gonna rotate that and then my alignment, shoulder, hip, knee, it's already in line. I lift that up, and I keep that alignment, toes pull back, I hit with the ball of the foot, and I retract. At the end of that, I pull back a little bit more by pushing my hip out. A lot of times this is locked. So when you pull your knee back, you'll pull your hip back. So what I do to get over that is I take the hip and push that out. Then I pull up to the crane stance, and then come back down. So that's the roundhouse. The, traditional way to train it. And the hands just stay to the side. Okay, here we go. Roundhouse kick. Remember, it's the three points. One. Two. Three. Five. 
I need you guys to feel this, so that means don't go quick. It's really easy for me just to flip the kick out here. That's not work at all, okay? That, that comes because of I, I did a lot of these. Six. Seven. Other side, same thing, focus. One. Two. Three. Okay, stretch it down, hamstrings, lower back, just relax, think about the kick, heel higher than the knee, toes pulled back. A little bit lower. Bend the knee, straighten the back, stand up. Okay, so we'll go into some breakaways and pull-outs and stuff. But before we do that, so you guys are all higher belts and stuff, you understand that uh, short cuts are actually, even though I tell you don't to do them, they're actually a pretty valuable thing to learn. Um, I go back to uh, this training, what I would call traditional training, strict training, when the shortcut becomes part of the technique. And I notice I'm doing it, say like, um, on a videotape or something. So for example, in order to practice kicking high, depending on who you are and where you're at, you have to loosen up certain parts that you wouldn't do if you were kicking low. So you have to, in order to do that, you gotta let your foot kinda do whatever it wants. So this area loosens up so you can feel that. But you know, that's not a very good side kick. But my foot's getting a little bit higher, and I don't kick like that when I'm kicking the real target, so that's good. But then when I am practicing, like say on the weekend, I know some video, I did a side kick and warming up, and, um, and I didn't do a high one, I did, and my foot did that. At that point, immediately when I saw that, because that's not how you do a side kick from there, I go right back to this training. So the shortcut can get you somewhere, but micro habits, right? It can also take you from somewhere. So when we're doing these traditional things and you've already come up and you say, well, this thing, I can't kick high from here. What am I doing? Um, depending on where you're at, just be aware of that. So if I throw my roundhouse kick high and my foot comes up and I do this, well, I got it there, but if that becomes my low kick, there's a problem, okay? That's when I come back to this type of training. And by the way, it only takes one session when I notice it to get me back there. Okay, so um, so short cuts are good. Just make sure you know why you're doing them. Step back to left bow stance, do a left inside hooking block, turn the left inside hooking block into a sweeping palm block and a right thrust punch. So basically, there's your block, then cover as you hit, 
and then back out. Okay? So maybe visualize two punches coming in. So here and there. Again, what would the shortcut be? The shortcut would be bang. Okay? Don't do that. We'll do the long version because I'm in tradition today. Okay, step back. Solid bow stance. Cross your arms on the inside block. A okay, sweeping palm block thrust punch comes at the same time. And then go back out and then stand up making sure you're straight. Okay, one. Other side, one, alternate, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, slide back to a deep left bow. Cross your arms and a good inside rising, high rising block. Okay, open the hand, cover your face. Punch to the solar plex, extend the hands straight out towards your shoulder, pull, square your shoulders up, drop an inch down, stand straight up. Okay, shake it up. Stepping back to the left bow, left rising block, cover, and back. Just don't come back up to here. Okay, so it's the same thing. So instead of sweeping palm block from the inside to the reverse, we're dropping it over this way. So you've covered this side, now cover this side. One. Back, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Back, six, back, 
seven, back, eight, back, nine, back, ten, back, other side, one, back, two, back, three, back, four, back, five, back, six, back, seven, back, eight, back, nine, back, ten, back, alternate, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent. Shake it out. Relax. Stretch it down. Usually when I'm stretching between movements, I'm really actually thinking of one thing I could improve on the last movement. I always usually punch and pivot timing is wrong. Um, or my tar targeting is off. So let's go ahead and go back to the right bow. Left back fist, right vertical. Um, left thrust punch, um, but to the side. Okay, so step back, right bow, right sweeping ball block, left strike, vertical fist, okay, and then we'll just go ahead and pivot to the vertical fist to the second opponent. And this one I'll go a little bit high beneath the distance and then stand back up. So it goes one, same thing that we just did, back, two, each independent motion, but make it smoothly flow together, three, four, your pivots, make sure they're not too soon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, So if we want to look at the pivots, it should be correct, but really, as long as your knuckles are hitting straight, then the pivot gets before that, you're, you're good. But when your pivot creates a back fist sort of, and you don't realize that, that's when you want to make sure you don't do that. So let's be really technical here. So back to our right bow, start your punch on the twist, because we want power where? At the end of our technique, why do we twist? for torque and power. So I'm going to torque and turn. Now I'm putting the hips into this. Same thing on this direction. Punch and then right as I would twist, turn. That's your hidden distance and that's your, your shoulder distance. If you do that out of sequence, you can still develop power, but it's like your old car that you had in high school that, that missed every once in a while. Wastes a lot of gas. <laughs> Doesn't go very far. Still gets you there though, right? So we want to make sure we're tuned up. So we'll go through this slow. One, twist, twist and pivot. Back, put the twist and the pivot together. Tie the hip with the wrist. Two, back, three, back, four. Ok, 
Okay, you have to do three, and I'm going to watch your pivots. One. Good. Two. Three. Okay, so it looks like a pivot or two is a little sooner on the second punch than the first. Getting back to it, that's just rush in. So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to really break it up. I'm going to suggest that you don't practice this unless you know for a fact you're doing what I'm telling you wrong, and only do it for a little while. So get to the punch, um, stop on the, on the twist. Do not do the vertical. Get to the inverted. Ready? One. Okay, so you should be inverted. You should feel it. You shouldn't have pivoted yet. If you've already pivoted and everything, okay, yes. Okay, now, twist. Withdraw the hip or push the hip forward. Two, do it together. <laughs> Got it? Now, inverted punch, no, piv no pivot. Inverted punch, you can't go any further without locking, without bending your arm. Twist. And you, yeah, you gotta feel that point. Okay, so basic, one of the theories is here comes your punch and they're punching yours. You should have already locked it, but let's just pretend. This is a good demonstration when I learned this. Okay, so me with my arm length and my opponent being the same person as me, and we move at the exact same time, as soon as I turn sideways, I'm going to create distance, um, and his punch should not be able to hit me. Hey, don't lean, but punch. But I want to get my center line off the, the line, because this is where my... But I don't want to do it too soon, because if I turn to here, he's already adjusted, now his targets are different. So I'm going right at the end, where I'm going to hit him, I must be in range, he's in range with me too. So at the end, I'm going to turn and then I might come back. Okay, so here's um, the practice we did to get out of this because when I was a student, we all had a problem with this. We put our position in a right bow stance and we put our right fist up where it would be as we pivot, right? He let us do the vertical already. So now all you have to do for a hidden distance punch is turn and reach the person and back. So if you happen to be in this, hey, I don't want any trouble, bang, you get a heck of a lot of distance. So he set us up here, and then he put our hands here, and we got in front of each other, really close, actually, it's kind of scary. So this is what we're going to do. Start your punch, pivot, but pull back. Okay? You'll feel if you do this. That's a back fist. You'll feel it when it's super fast. And if you feel that, go a little further out with your hand, because this isn't a power play. Okay, so here we are, one, two, we're just learning hip, twist, hip, twist, three, four, five, like they're tied together. When I pull this string, I pull that one. Six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten. Now you pull your hand in a little bit. One, hand moves first, two, in the hip. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now you pull it way in. Okay, way in. We work back to here. Actually, let's skip. Work to here. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, shake it out a little bit. So the question I asked my instructor was, would it be better to hit a little incorrect and get your hands back or practice hitting correct and leaving your arm out? <laughs> of course, those are stupid questions, but when you're a yellow belt, you know, it's not an either or thing. But his answer to me was, um, in a situation, if you're thinking about which one to do, it's already over. Don't worry about it. But to get your arm back. So when we're going fast, the object, get it back. But he said, if you do it correctly and hit the target, you don't have to worry too much about getting it back. It will happen automatically. So he never really did answer my question as well as I wanted it. But when we're going fast, I'll give you the answer that he should have gave me. When you're going fast, if you start doing it incorrect for the speed, you haven't trained them. The, you haven't trained this one enough to make it a subconscious thing. But if the count is going one back, two back, and you're not in control of it, forget all that. Get your hand back and improve the next one. Okay, so put your foot 
one foot in front of the other, right foot first, put your hand up, pivot, twist, step, forget all the sequencing. You're going to slightly turn sideways, somebody's grabbing our shoulder, you know, or pulling back to punch, we're just going to turn and punch, and then shake it out, then hands up. Okay, so we're in a defensive position, hidden distance punch, and back. Okay, here we go. Make sure you're not in a good bow stance, just sort of a casual stance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if, you're, if you've trained even a little while, you'll start noticing you're going to do the bow stance. Your body knows how to, see it knows how to cheat correctly, but it also knows how to cheat incorrectly. You gotta reward it for cheating correctly and punish it for cheating incorrectly. And you can do that any way you want. Put the other side, because some of you might find yourself in the left-legged lead, or you might be left-handed, or you just might stand this way. Okay, hands come up. It's coming this way, turn, and come back. So it goes from neutral, bang, to my fists are up, and then I'll, I will step. Then I'm gonna open it up and relax. One, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, five, uh, six, uh, seven, uh, eight, uh, nine, ten, uh, and shake it out. So I'm just going to tell you on your punches, <clears throat> do some honest reflection on it and tell me um, if your left hand or your right hand should feel how close. If there's a big feeling in any of your strikes, like your right hand and your right hand it feels 20% or 30% more powerful than your left, you're at a disadvantage. That's a bad, bad sign if you've been training for a while. Um, if it feels pretty much close within three to four percent, good. Now I train my left side to, and I train it on purpose and stop training the right one until my left side feels as good, if not better than my right side. To me, that's a good, that's a good thing to have if you're not left-handed. So I'm actually sometimes, my left leg, well, I'm feeling more comfortable with that left jab than I am with my right one. Weird, but it takes a while. That's a sign then to go back to the other side. So now put your feet right to the center. Put your hands down, and the first one will be right with a slight step. Normally I'd use an open X. Slight step, bang, and get your hand in there. And I don't care how you come back, you don't have to come back any other way, but I want a slight step and drive the right hand out there, and pay attention to how hard it is. The next one will be left. I want them equal. If you are do way dominant, then you've got, you have to do something that doesn't feel very natural. If, you, if you're right hand dominant, way dominant, like 20% dominant, you're, what's going to end up happening is both of them will get stronger, but it will always feel, so you're going to have to lower the power of the one that you're already strong with to get this other one to feel the same. Um, and that's what I want you to do. So we're going to go forward with the right, because I'm right handed first. One, bam. Now I'm going to compare that to my left. Two, oh. now I'm going to go back and forth. Three. training we're on a video thing so reaction training um, hard to do if you don't have a partner but two of you there have a partner um, two of you have family members so what you do is you have somebody take a piece of paper okay, put it where your punch will be so you don't hyperextend if you hyperextend on a piece of paper you hurt you hurt, you hurt your elbow you hold it fold it you don't need a lot of paper and when they drop it you don't track it, you react, bang. And here's the thing, if you react late um, and you catch yourself easy up because you know you're gonna miss it, that's not a reaction, who cares if you missed it, okay? You still do the motion. You allow the subconscious to train the reaction time. You train your technique, out, hard, back, out, hard, proper alignment, everything, who cares if this piece of paper hits the ground, and I do it correctly, I'll take that over then a half correct touch. If you don't um, have a partner to, to drop paper or things, 
Reaction training is very hard to do. Okay, really hard to do. Um, you have to make things up, use music, use sound. Okay, so put your feet really close together. Okay, so we're gonna step fully to the right, deep right bow stance, and we're gonna pivot to a deep left bow. So put your hands right on your hips, and I want you to use this kind of as a stretch, so butt from a bow. Okay, stretch, hip flexor out here, and then shift to the other side, push the hips forward, get a little bit lower, then shift to the other side, Keep your back straight, stretch a little bit lower, work that hip flexor a little bit, stretch to the other side, this time you can go a little bit lower, lock that back leg out, lower, keep it locked, straighten up, to the other side, push it out. So the trick on these motions here for both stance turning, you're always probably turning to deal with another opponent or to you know, take your center line off. Push off with the bent knee toward the other direction. Don't just swivel. Push that back leg into the, either that way, you're either pushing yourself into your second opponent or away from this one, okay? So push, and it's gonna drop lower. Two, three, push, four, push, five, nice and low for a stretch. Six, seven, eight, Nine, and ten. And you stand straight back up, shake it out, take a knee, and here we go. Good job, guys.